Hi everyone, it's Professor Primerton. In this video we're going to look at geometric sequences. So this is going to seem very similar to the last section about arithmetic sequences, except this section we're going to be talking about geometric sequences and how to find a common ratio for a geometric sequence, how to write the terms of a geometric sequence, how to find a formula for the general term or the nth term of a geometric sequence, and then in the next video we'll talk about annuities and also a formula for the sum of the first n terms of a geometric sequence. So why are geometric sequences so important? We're going to study the properties involving geometric sequences and be able to answer questions like this. Suppose that you're offered a position and you need to decide which position offer to accept. Well, you have one job that has a beginning salary of $30,000 and they promise increases in your salary 6% every year for four years in a row. Or you have a job offer with a beginning salary of $32,000, but they only promise a 3% raise in your salary every year. How much will you make per year in the fifth year? Which company's offer will be better for you? We're going to be able to answer that as we go through this section. So geometric sequences, we're going to see what, why are they so important. The following figure shows that the sequence of the number of squares is increasing in number from left to right. So notice that we have one square shaded, and then this one square is divided up into five squares that are shaded, and then again, those five squares shaded are divided in the same way, except now you have 25 squares, and then again, 125 squares, and then finally you have 625 squares in this final picture. So you will definitely generate a fractal from this if you continue this process for indefinitely. So notice that in this sequence, after the first term, you are multiplying by 5 to get from the first term in the sequence to the next term, which is 5 squares, and then you're multiplying 5 by 5 to get 25. 25 times 5 gives you 125, and then the same thing between 125 and 625. So if you are multiplying the preceding term by a constant amount, then this type of sequence is called a geometric sequence. So let's look at the definition. A geometric sequence is a sequence of numbers where each term after the first is obtained by multiplying the preceding term by a fixed non-zero constant. It has to be non-zero, otherwise the, the terms will just become zero. The amount that you multiply by from one term to the next is called the common ratio of the sequence. So in the last section we talked about the common difference, which we were adding the same amount from one term to the next. This section will be talking about a common ratio from multiplying from one term to the next. So the common ratio is denoted with a lowercase r, and you can find it pretty quickly by dividing any term in the sequence after the first term by the term that directly precedes it, so the, the term that's right before it. So let's try out the sequence of number of squares shaded. So the sequence of numbers was 1, 5, 25, 125, 625, and dot, dot, dot. The pattern continues. You can choose any two terms consecutive to calculate the common ratio. So common ratio is denoted with a lowercase r. Let's choose the last two that we have listed, 625, 125. If you take 625, the new term, or any term, and you divide it by the term that precedes it, 125, you will get the common ratio, which in this case is multiplied by 5 from one term to the next. So that's the common ratio R. And keep in mind, it doesn't matter which two terms you choose. If I choose 125 and 25, I should also get the same ratio. 125 divided by the one before it was 25, and that is also 5. So that's why it's called the common ratio. It should be consistent or constant from one term to the next. So let's start by looking at this question on how to find the common ratio for geometric sequences. You have the sequence 1, 5, 25, 125, and 625. Well, this is the sequence we just were looking at with the shaded squares. 
So let's choose 1 and 5 to calculate the common ratio. The common ratio will be always the new term divided by the old term. So 5 divided by the term before it was 1. Then we found out the common ratio was 5. So how about the sequence 4, 8, 16, 32, and 64? What's the common ratio this time? Well, again, choose any two consecutive terms. This time the common ratio looks like it is 2 because you take 64 and you divide by the term before it, which is 32, and that's 2. Okay, third sequence. How about 6, common negative 25, then 24, then negative 48, then 96? This sequence is an alternating sequence because it changes sign from one term to the next. Let's choose 24 and negative 12. So the common ratio is calculated as 24 divided by the term before it is negative 12, and so the common ratio is negative 2. So notice that the first two sequences, the ratios were positive numbers. Well, this sequence gave us a common ratio that's negative, and that's what produced this alternating sequence. It alternates because you're multiplying by a negative number. All right, let's try the last sequence. 9 and then negative 3, then 1, negative 1 third, 1 ninth, and so on. I don't want to use the fractions, so let's choose the first two again. So I can choose any two consecutive terms, and this time I'm going to choose the new term is negative 3, and the old term, or the preceding term, is 9, so the common ratio is negative 1 third. And again, notice that because the ratio is negative, you have an alternating sequence, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, and so on. So just a couple notes, choose any two successive terms, To calculate the common ratio. Just like we did in this in this question. And the common ratio is to always denoted with a lowercase r. Alright, let's look at what the graph of a geometric sequence would look like. So this is the graph of the sequence of the number of squares that were shaded from the last page. So the sequence started with the first term, which was one square shaded, so that's a sub one. And then the second term was you multiply by five, and you get five squares shaded. Then you multiply by five again, you get 25. And you multiply by five again, you get 125. So this graph should look like discrete points just like a sequence would with a graph, but it kind of models not a linear function like we did with arithmetic sequences, but this looks more like an exponential growth function. If you were drawing a curve between the points, it would look like an exponential function. And it actually turns out to be f of x equals base 5, and that 5 is coming from the common ratio. And the exponent is x subtract 1, and the exponent is only written that way because if we substitute in n equals 1 or x equals 1, we need to get the first term. 5 to the 1 minus 1 power gives you 5 to the 0, which is 1. And so the domain for, for sequence, just a reminder, is only the counting numbers. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. It's not the set of all real numbers. So, how do you write out the terms of a geometric sequence when you have the first term and the common ratio known? Well, you can use a recursion formula. If you take the first term of a geometric sequence, and that's denoted a sub 1, if you take this first term and you multiply by the common ratio, r, you will get the next term. And then you can take the second term and multiply by the common ratio to get the third term, and so on. So this gives us a recursion formula. a sub n is equal to r times a sub n minus 1. And remember what the recursion formulas mean, that to find the nth term in a geometric sequence, then multiply the previous term by the common ratio. 
which is R. So this gives us a way to figure out every term in a geometric sequence using this recursion formula. So let's try out example one with this recursion formula idea in mind. Find the first six terms of the following geometric sequences when we only have the first term and the common ratio. So number one, first term is four, and the common ratio is three. So the first term is given. It's 4. If you want to find the second term, you take the previous term, which is 4, and you multiply by the common ratio, which is 3. So the second term is 12. If you want to find out the third term, you take the previous term, 12, and you again multiply by the common ratio. So you get 36. So that's the third term. A sub 4 is previous term times 3. And this is 108 for the fourth term. A sub 5 would be 108 times 3, which is 324. That's the fifth term in this geometric sequence. And then one more term to find. A sub 6, you take 324 and you multiply by 3, and this is 972, and that's the sixth term in the sequence. So notice how fast these terms are growing. You're not adding the same amount. You're multiplying by a common ratio. So the sequence started off at 4, then 12, then multiply by 3, 36, multiply by 3, 108, again 324, and then again 972. All right, let's try another problem. This time the first term is 3, and the common ratio is a fraction, but it's also negative, so negative a half. So let's do the same thing find the first six terms. First term is always given in a recursion formula. Second term, take the previous term, 3, and multiply by the common ratio, and that gives you negative 3 halves. Keep it as a fraction. Third term, well, we're going to have to take a fraction and multiply by a fraction because you have negative 3 halves, the previous term, times negative a half which is the common ratio, and that is positive 3 fourths. Fourth term, a sub 4 would be 3 fourths times negative a half, and that is negative 3 eighths. Notice again that since the ratio is negative, the signs are alternating from one term to the next. The fifth term, a sub 5 is negative 3 eighths times negative a half, that is positive 3 sixteenths. And then one more term. The sixth term turns out to be 3 sixteenths times negative a half, which is negative 30 divided by 32. So this gives you an idea of how to take the recursion formula and generate a geometric sequence, but you need to know the common ratio and you need to know the first term. So just like we did with arithmetic sequences, we want to be able to not only use the recursion formula, we want to be able to find out any term in the sequence if it's a geometric sequence by finding the general term or the nth term. So here's how we're going to do this. A geometric sequence can also be found if you have the first term, a sub 1, and you have the common ratio. So just like we found out with the recursion formula, we also know that the first term of a geometric sequence, then we can find a formula for the nth term as follows. So here's how it works. We're going to be looking for a pattern again, just like we did with arithmetic sequences. So these are the first six terms of a geometric sequence. The first term is a sub 1. To get the second term, you take a sub 1 and multiply by r. So a sub 2 is a sub 1 times r. Well, to get the third term, you take a sub 1 r, which is the second term, and you again multiply by r. So the third term would be a sub 1 times r times r again, which it gives you a sub 1 r squared. So you have to multiply by r twice to get from the first term to the third term. And then your fourth term would be a sub 1 r times r times r or a sub 1 r cubed, and so on. 
pattern will continue again. So it's just like arithmetic sequences. Arithmetic sequences, you are adding D from one term to the next. Geometric sequences, you're multiplying by R from one term to the next. So what is this relationship that you notice between the exponent on the R and the subscript of the term? It turns out that the first term has R to the zero, the second term has R to the first, the third term has R squared, it's so R to the second, the fourth term has R to the third, well, the exponent turns out to be 1 less than the subscript of the term. So the general term of it, or nth term, of a geometric sequence always appears to be this form. a sub n is equal to the first term, a sub 1, times r, the common ratio, to the n minus 1 exponent. You have to multiply by r n minus 1 times to get from the first term to your nth term. So that's the definition of the general term of a geometric sequence. The nth term or the, or the general term of a geometric sequence, you need to know the first term and the common ratio. And it turns out that the formula is a sub 1 r to the n minus 1 power. So let's try example 2. This is very similar to, to the last section when we talked about arithmetic sequences again. Find the common ratio, find the first six terms, find the nth term, and then find out the eighth term. So let's start with the common ratio. So remember, the common ratio, we found those in example one. You take any two terms in your sequence. Let's take 64 and negative 64 and 32. So you take the new term and divide by the one previous to it, the preceding term, and it looks like the common ratio is negative two. So now you can find out the sixth term because we have the fifth term. The sixth term is a sub 6. It's found by using the recursion formula, r times a sub 5. So the common ratio is negative 2, and a sub 5 is negative 64. So the sixth term would be positive 128. So now let's not find the eighth term yet. Let's find out the nth term. The general term, or the nth term, It is a sub n equals the first term times r to the n minus 1 exponent. So that means we have first term is negative 4 times the common ratio is negative 2, and that's raised to the n minus 1 power. The common ratio is what's being raised to the n minus 1, not the first term, just the r. And just a reminder, because the order of operations you need to do the exponent on the negative 2 before you multiply by negative 4. So keep in mind that negative 4 times negative 2 to the n minus 1 is not equal to 8 to the n minus 1 power. So you cannot multiply the negative 4 and the negative 2. You have to do negative 2 to the exponent first, figure out what that value is, and then multiply by negative 4. So now we have the nth term, let's find the eighth term. So if we want the 8th term, our n is equal to 8. So let's take 8 and place it into the general formula. Negative 4 is the first term. Common ratio is negative 2, and it's raised to the 8 minus 1 power. So negative 4 times negative 2 to the 7th power. So make sure you do the exponent first. And this is equal to 512, positive 512. Example 3 is very similar. We're just given a different sequence. Find the common ratio, the first six terms, the nth term, and the seventh term if you have the geometric sequence 5, negative 15, 45, negative 135, and 405, and so on. So again, let's find out the common ratio. Pick any two successive terms. So I'm going to choose the first two. Negative 15 divided by the preceding term, 5, is negative 3. And that's good because the ratio is negative. We notice that we are alternating signs from one to the next. So now let's find out the sixth term, because we have five terms given. a sub 6 would be the common ratio times a sub 5. So a sub 5 is the fifth term, 405, and you multiply by the common ratio, negative 3, and that's 
negative 1,215. Well, I can also find out the seventh term, because I have the sixth term now. The seventh term would be r times a sub 6. So negative 1,215 times the common ratio again, and that is positive 3,645. Find out the nth term, or the general term, So again, the formula for geometric sequences is a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. That gives you the nth term, a sub n. So our sequence would be the first term, 5, times the common ratio, negative 3. Make sure the ratio goes in parentheses because it's being raised to a power, n minus 1 power. And just like with arithmetic sequences, the n is being treated like it's a variable. And again, just a quick note. Keep in mind that you need to perform the exponent operation before you multiply. So 5 times negative 3 to the n minus 1 is not equal to negative 15 to the n minus 1. That's not true. You need to figure out negative 3 to the exponent first, get your value, and then multiply by 5. So if you remember from the previous chapter, we talked a lot about exponential functions. So just a quick reminder about exponential functions. They always appear of this form, f of x equals base b to the x power, and it's this exponential function is going to be used to model the growth of the United States population from 1970 to 2010. So from 2000 to 2010, the United States population grew at the lowest rate since the Great Depression years, 1930s, and as a result, in our next example, we're going to consider the country's population growth from 2000 to 2010. And we're going to find out it actually turns out to be a geometric sequence because geometric sequences and exponential functions are very commonly associated with each other. The only difference is that the domain of a geometric sequence is the set of positive integers or counting numbers and the domain of an exponential function is the set of all real numbers. So example four in the following table, we're going to focus on the population of the United States between 2000 and 2010. The estimates from the United States Census Bureau are provided from 2001 through 2009. So these years, 2001 through 2009, are just approximations given from the United States Census Bureau. So part one, show that the data provided in the table represents an increasing geometric sequence. Well, a sequence is a geometric sequence if the common ratio are all the same. So we're going to calculate several of these and see if the common ratio turns out to be equal. So calculate the common ratio R Let's do the first two years, 2000 and 2001. So we're not dividing the years, we're dividing populations, which are values from the range. So 284 is the term in the sequence, divided by the preceding term, which is 281.4. And if you approximate this, it turns out to be 1.009. So that is the base of the exponential function, or the common ratio. Now let's calculate a few more of these. Let's calculate the next pair. So 2001 to 2002, the new population is 286.6. And all these populations are in millions. And the old population is 284.0. And if you approximate this to three decimal places, it's 1.009 again. So, so far, the first three would be modeled by an exponential function. Or would be in terms of a geometric sequence. Let's do a couple more. The next one would be 286.6 and 289.3. So 289.3 divided by the preceding term, 286.6. And again, that turns out to be 1.009. One more. You can do this for every single pair if you would like to. So now we're going to choose 292.0 and divide by the preceding term, 289.3. 
and it's also 1.009. And like I said, you can keep doing this for every single pair of successive um, terms in the geometric sequence. But what we found is that since all the successive common ratios are the same, then the sequence is a geometric sequence. And that's what we were asked to find, or show, that this sequence of populations actually can be modeled by an exponential function because the sequence is geometric. So now that we know it's a geometric sequence, let's find the formula for the general term, or the nth term of the geometric sequence, that models the population of the United States in millions, where n is the years after 1999. So n is the number of years after 1999. Now the reason why that's 1999 and not 2000 is 2000 was the first term in the sequence. So you want a sub 1 so a, where n equals 1, to be 1 year after 1999, and that was the year 2000. The general term for a geometric sequence, we've been looking at this for a while now. It's a sub n equals the first term times the common ratio to the n minus 1 exponent. So a sub n is equal to the first term was the first population. a sub 1 is... 281.4 million. Then this is the first term. So that was the population in the year 2000. So 281.4. And just know that all the units are in millions of people. And we found out from the last problem that the common ratio was 1.009. So multiply by 1.009, and the common ratio is what's raised to the n minus 1 exponent. So this is the general term, or the nth term, for the population of the United States. So now let's use the general term to answer part 3. What is the projected population of the United States in 2020? Let's find out what the number n is. n is the number of years after 1999. So n would be 2020, subtract 1999, and that is 21 years. So we are looking for the 21st term in the geometric sequence. So it's 281.4 times 1.009 raised to the 21 subtract 1 power, which is 281.4 times 1.009 to the 20th exponent which is approximately equal to 376.6 million people. That's the projection according to the United States Census Bureau for the year 2020. So this is a good place to stop our discussion on geometric sequences and finding the general term or nth term of a geometric sequence. If you have any questions about any of the examples that we talked about, please let me know. Or if you have any questions about any of the problems in the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And in the next video, we'll talk about annuities and the sum of the first n terms of a geometric sequence.